All right, Hawks Learning. Let's take a look and see what's going on here. I wanted to first pull across the syllabus. Um, I'm still working on the schedule as far as like how much and you know when things will be due. But there was the piece of the syllabus. If you watched the welcome video, that I came across and was like, whoa, I didn't fix that. So I wanted to show you um, that repaired portion. All right. So it was method of instruction. Sorry about that. Let's see where you at. There it is. Okay. So before it said connect in there, so I got that fixed. All right, so this course is delivered in an online format. Instruction will be delivered via Hawks Learning online learning environment. Um, you will be you're required to get an access code for Hawks Learning, and we we talked about the textbook and the options as far as um, you, you know being able to have a hard copy of the textbook and the access code, or if you wanted to get a a, a paperback version of the a textbook and and the access code, or just the access code, and I'll show you how having the access code will give you ex essentially exactly the same thing as the book all right so um, with Hawks learning content we will be content will be introduced in the learn section of the homework with videos expanded notes and examples the student will learn and practice the work in the practice section of the homework then once they're ready they can move to the certify section to earn their homework grade for that section so there's no quizzes. Essentially, and I'm going to use my pointer to kind of guide through here. You have the learn part. That's like sitting in class taking notes. You have the practice part. That's the part where you know maybe in class we're practicing together, or maybe you go home you're practicing together. Kind of what traditionally what homework was. And then you have the certify part. The certify part is over the same problems that you've learned about and practiced, but now you're certifying it, and so it kind of works like a like a quiz. And um, so that way you, that is your quiz for that section. So every quiz happens when you come to certify. And so there is a quiz for every section. It's just inside the homework itself. And we'll look at how that works once we get inside. In the practice section of the homework, students will have access to what's called a tutor button or tutor. Inside the tutor, you'll have an option to do a step-by-step -step where they'll walk you through step-by-step -step, kind of like guided practice. You have a learn, and essentially what the learn button does is takes you right back to the learn section of the homework. And then you actually have a solution where it'll just show you the solution and then give you an option just to try another one. Each of these tools provide a different approach to helping the student work through the question. When questions arise from suggested homework, you can use the send to instructor to send that question directly to me as an email. I'll provide feedback via, via um, response or response via email um, and text or maybe in the form of a video file with audio feedback on the question. Tests will correspond directly to the questions in the homework. So you should learn from your mistakes um, that you're seeing inside the homework to be prepared for the test. I will also provide a rule um, uh, like a, a test review that narrows down exactly the questions that you'll have on your test so you have an opportunity to um, you know prepare that's like with a study guide all right so you should learn from your mistakes that mistakes are normal part of problem solving when a person first learns to use a hammer purple thumbs are common the person learns not to bang their fingers and thumbs by carefully practice by careful practice when you are learning to use mathematical technique mistakes are common practice is essential you also need to learn that starting over is sometimes necessary. So this whole pro this is a process and, and that's why in my welcome video I mentioned not trying to cram everything into Sunday evening. You should get started on it throughout the week. Go through and do the ones you feel comfortable with. Come back and review the questions that you know you maybe had a little more trouble with before you go ahead and try to certify. So kind of building the process, building the knowledge, building the practice. Alright, to Hawks. So when when we go into Hawks, you really there's no need to go into Blackboard, but I have Blackboard pulled up just to remind you, you know, the information about it. So a couple things: um, if you haven't got your account started, here's the here's the link showing you step by step what to do. Um, here's a video that's created by the uh, Hawks Learning showing you what to do. Um, but the book, the page that you want to to create or to use as your to bookmark to get to Hawks is this learn.hawkslearning.com. So we're going to go ahead and click on that guy and go ahead and bookmark that. So that's your that's your go-to. Just go ahead and, and you know how whatever you're using Google Chrome or if you're you know whatever browser you're using, go ahead and create a bookmark for that because that's where you're going to be going. 
Um, creating a new user account. This is not an account. This is not a video showing you how to create your account. That's the other video. If you're having troubles creating an account, please let me know and I'll help you get in the right direction. All right, so you got your stuff saved, log in, and it pulls up our course. Here's your reminder that I have 18 days left to buy my access code as a student for this class. Okay, don't please don't wait until the 18 days are up and send me an email saying, "Oh, well, I wasn't able to come up with the money to get my access code, so it's going to be till the end of the month." All right, that's not how this works. You know, class started on Monday. You should have been, you should be shuffling right now to get your money in place to buy that access code. All right, um, I, I, I know. Like I just wanted to real quickly say, show you this. When you have your access code, whether you buy it from the bookstore, you click on activate. You can put your access code in right there, or you can click on purchase online. And um, I wanted you to take a look at that price of $72. I believe that's slightly less than the, the price of the textbook through um, Thomas University at the bookstore. So this will get you just an access code and an ebook. Okay, so seventy-two dollars for access code and ebook. All right, so I decided not to purchase that back out. I got eighteen days. All right, so I, from this spot right here, I have several ways I can go into the course. I want you to kind of play around with it. The main thing I want to point out to you is ebook. So before I forget, so we're talking about this book and having access to a book, and you know, I want a hard copy, but what are my options if I don't buy a hard copy of the book? Well, here you go. Click on that ebook pulls it up, click on the link, and this is a, a PDF version of the book. This is the book right here. So if you want to go through and you want to, let's make it a little bit bigger real quick, and you want to have access to the book and read exactly what you'd be seeing if you were, um, if you had purchased the book, here it is. So you can go through here, you can turn the pages, you know, you've got a table of contents, you, you know, you have access to the book. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind as a reference point. Uh, I personally um, don't feel that you need to have a copy of the hard copy of the book. I feel that the resources that are inside of Hawks are sufficient to help guide you through this class. That the videos that I will post are sufficient to help you understand. Um, you, you know the key things like if we look at this page right here, and I'll, I'll reference this. Let me go back a page. I'll reference this when we are talking about oops I went the wrong way so like right here this table these definitions this visual this table right here these are all tables that you're gonna see inside the learn section so you're when we're in the learn you're really getting what's in the textbook here you might you know these are gonna be the same examples that we're gonna see inside of learn so just let's go ahead and jump into Hawks and kinda of see what's going on with that so close this guy out um, let's go back to dashboard so our main buttons that we're gonna look at are dashboard grades ebook over here if I send out an email through Hawks it'll come through here you'll see a, a thing up here or a little icon stating you have a message alright if you want to change in your settings to your account you got your settings stuff right there so here I am I'm ready to go uh, let's just go ahead and look at the whole deal We'll click on that and kind of see that, you know, here's my to-do list. Here are my lessons, which we'll talk about in just a minute, and then here's my test. So you have no tests listed right now. My to-do list are the things that I have to do within the week. All right. If you go to lessons, what this basically does is it's the same screen. You're just breaking down by the particular lessons that you have. So Hawks calls homework lessons. All right, quizzes will be quizzes, which we don't have any quizzes. I didn't create any, and then tests are tests, and you can see them there. So let's go and get started. Let's just jump into the first section, 1.1. Okay, so if you remember from the syllabus, uh, we talked about the learn, the practice, and the certify. So learn is where we go to actually gain our knowledge. So let's start there. So you come in here and what I envision for my students is, is that at this point right now they've got their notebook out and they're taking notes like they would in class so the first thing I would do is I'd start off and I'd write you know 1.1 getting started and I would you know go ahead and and you know kinda set up this hey these are my notes I'm gonna have from section 1.1 whether you write the objective down or not that's up to you 
All right. Um, what I think would be beneficial is go ahead and on the side here, go ahead and click on watch. Um, go ahead and watch this video that's here. Um, they're not fantastic in the in the first part. Um, so you know, you, you be careful in the sense that you think, oh, this is the only video I need to watch. I've inserted other resources so that you have some more video stuff. And as the class goes on, I'll insert videos of my own that teach you how to do the problems that you're doing specifically. So there'll be my, me talking instead of somebody else guiding you through how tos like we were sitting in the classroom. The videos that I'm in, using initially are just videos I find on the internet that explain the objectives, what I feel, extremely well. We got some more videos here. Let's see what this is all about. Okay, so don't use that. You don't need to use that more videos button. Okay, so you click on the video, watch this one video. It's pretty short. Let's see what pages are all about. And this is what you should be doing the first day. So this is kind of just a uh, table of contents kind of thing. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and jump in, go to page one. So getting started. So in, in my mind, what you're going to do here is you're going to go through and, and take notes on the vocabulary, take notes on the concept. You're not going to take notes over the, in, the, all of this. You're going to take notes over the bold printed stuff. So you know you're going through here and you say, oh, well, look, here it is, statistics. And there's my definitions. So you know this is what I was talking about. This is the stuff you see in the textbook. So you copy down your definitions just like you would in class. You got population. You scroll through here and you can see you got variables, data, census, parameter, and you're taking notes over this vocabulary on these first couple sections. Because the first couple sections are laying the foundation. Um, and then as we get further along, it'll be more mathematical and you'll start to get used to the, the process. Sample, sample statistic, and then you can see here kind of just some little reminders, things that we would see in the textbook. So there's all your definitions right there. You can just go through and copy those down. You, you know, but the benefit would be is that if you are reading the book, you're going to kind of get some verbal um, you know, assimilation of the knowledge coming together. And then here's the videos that I've pulled up off the internet to help you with. So Okay, I'm going to hit pause for a second. Um, you can see right here the spleen screen is split, and so you can't see all the video. The button that you want is right up here, and notice it says resize instructor note. So you click on that guy. So that takes the other way. Do it again, and that brings up the entire video. Push it again, that splits it in half again. So you got top, bottom, both. Top bottom and then we'll just go ahead we're not going to watch this entire video but we'll kind of get you the idea so here we are rolling through and then once again I would go ahead and take notes off of this video I would go ahead and jot down these thoughts because these are specific videos that I have pulled out to say, hey, I think that this is going to explain the concept on this particular slide. All right, so taking notes. We're in the learn section. We're, we're, we're collecting our information. We're done with that slide. We go to the next slide. And we've got a visualization. So once again, you can click on the, the hit it once, bring up the full screen. So you can kind of jot down your picture there, kind of scroll through here, take a look at what they're talking about. You know, here we've got a table. Tables are great examples. So a population, and then you have this list of things that the population are. You got the sample, you got this list of things. And so this is where you're gathering your knowledge. And then once you have what you need from there copied down, click on that and go ahead and watch the video to kind of reinforce it. Or maybe watch the video at the beginning and then take the notes so that you kind of have an idea of what's important. Once you're done, move to the next slide. So in this case here, this is the same video from the previous slide. I just put it here so you could see through. So you, now you've got some examples to work through. We're kind of guiding through, and the solutions are below. Got some examples again. I kept the same video in case you wanted to watch it again. I mean, obviously you can go back. The branches of statistics. So you know, however you want to do this. Do you want to watch the video first, get an idea, and then read? and write down the definitions or you know however you want to run that that's up to you but the, the topic for this slide is these branches of statistics so you're taking these notes you're gathering your data and then you got another example so now we're on page eight of eight so we click on next 
and it takes us back out to the practice. Now, look, at this point, at any point, you can go into certify and you can go ahead and, and try to do the problems in certify that I've provided, but the, here's the catch. If I go into certify, let's, let's, let's do this and see what happens. So remember, this is, this is your final grade. This is what earns you the points for, your, for this class. Okay, so notice, there's no help here. You've got tables. So if you're doing a problem where there's a table, which will be further along in the class, you've got a keyboard. So if you need a special symbol, you've got that. But there's no help. Once you're in here, the only way to get out of here is to save and end. And that's it. So if you don't remember how to do this question or you don't have any previous knowledge of this question, then you, you just have to answer this question or exit. So let's just, I'm just going to guess to see what happens, okay? So I guess, I submit, I got lucky, good job. Okay, I'm going to guess again, submit, I got it wrong. So I'm at this spot right here where you can notice I can try a similar one or can I accept the strike? So what happens is, is that I have it set up so that way, you know, you might accidentally put, you know, some type the wrong thing in or clicked accidentally on something. So what this does is you got a one or two attempt try. So we'll say try another. So notice we, we didn't get a strike here. We still got the, the two. So I'm going to purposely get it wrong again. Okay. So now I'm done. I got it wrong. I can go look at the solution. They'll tell me you know, the correct answer is inferential. They give me an explanation. So you know, I can read through here, take some notes, kind of think about what's going on. And then, for some reason, it's not showing me all my screen. And I don't know why it's not showing that to me. But there we go. So let me make that back big again so we can actually read this. All right. So we got inferential statistics. Um, we go through the process. We click on next. So I'm done with question number two. I'm down to one more strike. So I'm at another question. I come through here. Um, the average number of hours students in your statistics class study per week is four. Um, sounds like a population. So I'll click on that. It tells me good job. So my progress is moving across. I've got two out of nine. I have the standard set around 80% accuracy. So you've got to make an 80 or better to be able to get mastery. Because this isn't about like a percentage on this. It's about mastery. And it's, that's the score that you get is a mastery score. Um, so you've got to accommodate me at that 80%. All right, so next question. The number of times eight of the 36 students on your floor order Chinese food in a week. Well, I'm going to tell you that's a sample, but I'm going to put population on purpose so you can see what happens. I submit. It says, nope, that's wrong. So at this point, I can accept the strike or I can try another one. So I'm just going to go and accept the strike and show you that that, how that works. So I accept the strike. It asks me, do I want to look at the answer so you know I can display the answer again or the solution. So I'm just going to say to display answer. And it was sample, like I said. I'm going to the next one. Now I'm on question number five, and I'm down to zero strikes. So the next strike I get, it's going to kick me out. So let's go ahead and, and do this. Um, choose the sample. The number of children of a sample of 33 coaches in the NFL. Okay, so I'm going to purposely get the wrong answer. I click submit. Once again, it says, do I want to try another question? And you only get so many of those also, okay? So don't think that you can just keep on doing this and try another one all the way through. You only get so many of those. So I'm going to go ahead and accept the strike, display the answer, and next. So notice it kicked me out, all right? So I can't go back into certify anymore. I can go back and look at the questions I got wrong and, and practice that way. I can practice to unlock the certify. So when I click on this, all this does is takes me back into practice. So now I'm in, and let's go back so you can see where I'm at more clearly. So now you notice the color difference here. I'm inside of practice instead of the, the green, the forest green. I'm more in this teal color. I'm in here. So I messed up in the sense that I tried to certify. I wasn't ready, so I'm, I'm forced to go back into practice. Notice right here it says you're required to attempt 80% of the practice before starting certify. So I have to go in here and do this. So let's go in and take a look. Now, 
one thing about the practice that's different than the certify is that in the practice, number one will always be number one. Number one's question will always look like this, then numbers will be different. And when I skip and go to number two, number two will be this type of question but with different words. Number three, same question, different numbers. Number four, same question, different numbers, so forth, so forth. So here's one bad thing with this software. I can't go backwards. I can only go forwards. So normally homework has anywhere from eight to sixteen questions in it, so not a ton. Um, so you know you practice this as needed. If you need to go back to a question because you want to practice it some more, you'll have to go forward and skip to it. So what I recommend is is that you when you're doing the, the practice and you get a question wrong and you're having a hard time with it, what I recommend is a couple things. Is first of all, in your notes for that section, make a, a little a list of the questions that are giving you a hard time. So that way you can always come back and, and look them over. All right. So questions about that, please feel free to email me, um, talk on the phone with me, you know, whatever you need to kind of get your head wrapped around it. All right, so here we are in this question. We've watched the videos in the learn. We've taken the notes in the learn, but we really don't have our head wrapped around it. So you've got a couple options. Uh, obviously, on this question, you could click send to instructor, and that would send a message to me. Um, on this one, though, this is kind of one where it just kind of try to wrap your mind around it. Then send to instructor would be more so a situation where you know it's a problem where you got to work mathematically. Um, you know, it's a procedural type thing. So we're going to click on tutor to see what resources we have. So we click on Tutor, it brings it up right here. We're on step by step. So what this is doing now is we have the question. It says the first step in determining whether the statement is a population or a sample is to decide um, what we are looking at, if we are looking at a whole group or just a partial group. So in our notes and the video, we would have been able to understand that a whole group is a population, a partial group is a sample. So in this case right here, the final exams scores in your math class. So that's not part of my math class, that's all of my math class, so I say whole group. I submit and it says okay good, so it gives me that, that good job. Now they bring me right to that connection and say okay, now that we know the statement refers to the whole group, we can determine that the statement describes a population. So we're whole group, population, tying it together, I submit, good job. So now I'm here I am, I'm at the end of number one, number one is correct, I've moved a tick along on the nine questions here in my progress. I have an option, I can go to question two or I can just try another one. So I click on try similar. It pulls up a similar type of question with different words. The amount of money each person in your chemistry class spends eating out in a week. Okay, so once again, that's talking about everybody in my chemistry class, so I feel pretty good that's, that's a population. I choose population, I hit submit, and sure enough, I got it right. So you can try another one if you like, or you can go to the next one. So we'll go next. Okay, so now here we are, and, and, and like remember, this is a help video. This is not me teaching the content, but I'm just kind of helping you think through the process of how you might do it. So the height of five of the 32 plants in Mr. Leonard's, Leonardo's greenhouse. So it's five of them out of 32. That's a part of the whole, so I'm not real sure. So I'm going to go to Tutor. I could click on Learn, but what Learn does is Learn just brings you back to here. It doesn't bring you back to a specific you know, spot and learn. It just brings you back where the videos and the resources are so you can browse through. You've already taken your notes over this, so really there's no need for you to go there. So let's go back to step by step. Gives me an explanation again. Or you could just go to solution. You could just be like, oh, I just want to see what the answer is. Oh, that was a sample. Okay, so when it's worded like this, that would make it a sample. And you read through, you know, explanation of this is a part of the whole kind of thing. Once you got what you need, you click on back to practice. It brings us up to this spot right here. I can skip this question and get it wrong, or I can go to try a similar. Okay, well, part of a whole, that's definitely a sample. I submit my answer, and now I got it right. And so you'll continue this process. You'll continue working through these problems, and then I'm going to make this statement right here. Notice that it said you had to make an 80%. 
But y'all listen, there are nine questions here. This is an order every time, one through nine. If you do 80%, that means you're not going to do one or two of these questions. When you go to certify and you enter the certify, those questions are the same questions from the practice, from this section. So let's go here so you can see it. So when you go back, when you're able to go back into certify, those are the same questions that you got in practice, but they're in random order. So if you're like, oh, well, I'll just, you know, no big deal. I'll just do whatever on this, you know, I'll just kind of go and get the 80% and stop. That means there's going to be two questions that you didn't learn how to do. That you're going to come to the certify section and you're going to maybe come across them and not know how to do and those are going to cause your strikes. Those questions could also be on your exam. So although this is a mastery situation, it really behooves you to do your best to try to, to get all nine questions, to not stop. It will allow you to stop. It will allow you and say, okay, you've completed it enough. You're done. You've mastered this homework. But what I recommend is make sure you go all the way to the end. Try, practice all the problems so that you're prepared for the test, and the test is what really matters. The test is where we get our assessment from. Remember, this is 30% of your grade, so this does carry some weight when it's all said and done at the end of the semester. So just keep that in mind, okay? Certified does carry weight, um, but all right. So that's kind of our main run through. Um, we can go back to our dashboard from here. We can go back to our classroom right here. So either one of these buttons will take us back. So once I'm done with 1.1, I can go into 1.2, or I can go out of order. I mean, I, I don't have it set up where you have to do one in order. So we can go into data classification. And once again, you go into start to kind of learn first. You watch the video. You move to screen number two. This guy has 15, video, 15 pages to go through. So once again, same deal. You know, you're scrolling through here. You, you titled your notes now for today, 1.2 data classification. This is like you're sitting in class listening to me teach. You go through here, you copy on the definitions, watch the video, or watch the video and then copy on the definitions that are going to be specific to our textbook. And you keep rolling through the pages and, and so forth. When you're done, you end it. And like I said, you can go into certify or you can go, well, certify is, no it is, there it is. So you can go into certify and give it a try. And like I said, you, know, you get your three strikes and then you're out. Or you can go ahead and go right into practice and practice. I recommend that you go into practice first, get your head wrapped around the content, and then go into the certify unless you have some previous knowledge. All right, so that's the breakdown of Hawks. That's how it works. This is your, this is your, this is your learn. This is you getting notes from me. This is your practice. That's where you know maybe we're doing some practice problems in class, or that's where you're doing homework. And then this is like your quiz. This is like your final assessment for this class for this particular section. So traditionally, I had videos, I had my learn, I had homework problems you practice with guided solutions and stuff like you get there, and then I had a quiz. This just kind of does it all in one spot and keeps it housed together for you. All right, so please feel free to give me a call, send me emails with questions about this. Um, it, you're really going to enjoy the software. It's, it's powerful once you learn to use the resources to, to their fullest ability um, to help you. So uh, initially, you're going to have to kind of play around. So play around with it, get used to it, watch this video again, like I said, or give me a call. We can set up a time to, to discuss. Thank you.